all right hopefully the recording is uh, working now um it would be a real shame if it doesn't work but we'll know at the end anyways so yeah well, welcome guys here i have nasa hussein with me and uh, azahar salim otherwise known as scientist famously amongst our group and uh, yeah this is the first podcast that we're having and uh, the the idea uh, actually brought forward by scientists here just to have a little discussion on a weekly basis of the key performances um, of the week uh, as the tournament tournament is going on ahead and uh, you know we have a lot of new players there and i think there's a lot of content that's been created uh, that there needs to be a lot of appreciation for a lot of things that are being done um and yeah i think there's a lot of discussion points as well that we can bring forward so this being the first podcast and several weeks have already passed of the tournament we do have quite a few to actually uh, quite a few things to talk about um yeah just, so firstly i mean uh just want to confirm azahat and nasa you you both happy with your audio and everything everything working fine i'm just going to share <clears> my <throat> screen so once i do that i might not be able to change any settings yeah mine yeah, is working fine yeah, yeah it's working yeah. fine from hand as well but uh, let's get into this all right perfect so yeah i mean first thing on the uh, agenda of this podcast i was thinking about is just starting to talk about the standings currently um you know we we i think pretty much nearly halfway through the tournament now and uh, the current standings here uh <clears throat> with the fourth park warriors at the top um what is to be noted that two of the games uh, in that uh, match up has been against the number 7 and 8 tinsley and manor gladiators whereas other teams uh, such as burngreave donnell fairwell city page all they, they they've had, not had two games against the bottom teams so well not all of them anyways so even two fort park warriors i think at the moment might feel quite comfortable at the top the difference between the teams the top 6 is very small at the moment uh yeah what would you say nasa about this yeah i mean it's looking quite healthy to be honest i mean um, you know looking at fort park warriors you know they are still dominating at the top and they are um head to head with uh, burn grief um but looking at Donald as well Donald has been a big surprise i mean they they not had a good they not had the best start but looking at them you know breaching the top 3 i feel like they're going to give a lot of um a lot of beast to a lot of teams so yeah i mean first park has been has been very dominant and uh, you know to my surprise city strikers are for would have been at top at the moment currently but you know i think they had a few hiccups uh in the latter stage of the game so that's probably why they are below Fevel and Pejo. Yeah, I mean I mean I absolutely agree with you and City Strikers coming into the tournament I I mean they are personally for myself they are my favorite team to watch uh when I do watch the recordings and in particular the reason being I mean if you just have a look at some of the statistics here in terms of the bowling records Asif Mohammed I've been you know told by Hamza Hussain that he used to play at a high standard back in Pakistan but he he has been absolutely fantastic with his consistency of <laughs> you know line and length he's always aiming for that middle stump i've of course had the unfortunate experience of getting bowled by him as well myself <laughs> so i i mean i'm fully aware i'm unsure if scientists yourself and, and nasa have faced him yet uh, but i can say with certainty that he's a very very accurate bowler So yeah scientists what would you say about is what I mean you but yourself being a left armer as well yeah yeah um he obviously is definitely a new bowler he you know this is his first uh, you know tournament with uh, the BBICL and cricket arena and uh, you know the Osh Cricket Foundation um what is um to be highlighted straight off the bat is the slingy action that he has if the viewers obviously have watched the highlights you'll notice he's got that very round arm action rather than over the top which you know just creates a bit of confusion when it comes to knowing the angle of the ball and you know if it's going to swing or if it's going to come across and the second thing to note is the quick arm action that Asif Muhammad has which i think has been very beneficial for him i think <clears throat> definitely well you know without doubt um, he has got pace um but if we have a look at the action itself um so i'll uh, ask um, adnan if he can just pull up uh, j- just a video from somewhere 
um, just of his, uh, you know, that round arm slingy action. So I think is that Imran Khan coming in? So uh, we'll, we'll get on to Asif. Um, it's very fast. And what that does in a batter's mind is when you have a very slingy and quick arm action like that, it can create a doubt in your mind as to, you know, it, the ball's coming in quicker than what you initially think. So here we go. It's coming in. It's coming in. And... Yeah, I mean, absolutely, you're right. And, you know, some people have complained that in the more recent games, you know, I mean, here it's not a problem. He's starting here close to the number six. But at yeah. times he's going to that number 10. And people are complaining that, you know, he's going way too far across. But as far as the rules of the games are concerned, I mean, he can go outside that door and still come see, in, you know, yeah. that it doesn't matter where he's starting I from. No, I, uh, I don't see um, any. Yeah. So definitely, I don't, I don't, I don't see any issues with um, starting uh, with wherever you want, just to create that momentum. So yeah, so if we look at our action, here it comes, nice and slowly, and you see that. Look at if you look at that point there. Look how far it is, and look at the round action that he's giving instead of that upright. What is that doing is, is creating doubt in the batsman's mind as to they thinking that the ball is going to come a lot quicker than what it actually does. And I think that's what's been his success. You know, if he carries on the way he's going, and like you said, Adnan, he's a very stump to stump bowling, very straight, you know, doesn't like, you know, go very wide, um, almost predictable in a way as well. But it's one of them ones where even though he's predictable, it's still very hard to play him. And I think that's what's been his major success. And, you know, of course, he is very blessed to have another supreme bowler on the other end in the form of Imran Khan. And I mean, you know, I'm going to be playing these videos of these wickets that Imran Khan has picked up straight away, dominating, you know, <coughs> South Park Warriors, formerly known as Molvi Sixers. And I mean, I would question you, Nasser Hussain, by being one of the veteran indoor batsmen uh, in our league. I mean, how do you deal with someone with such pace and swing? And, you know, I'll let you answer while I'm just playing this video in the background. I mean, uh, what I'll do is I'll explain your question and then I'm, I'm going to move on to, um, you know, discussing difference between Azahat, Danish and Asif, right? So uh, in order to play against the likes of Imran Khan, especially the way he swings the ball, it's just to be on the top of the ball. So, you know, with Imran Khan, obviously he moves it in. And there's this certain balls he moves it away as well. <laughs> so the best thing to do is you got to look at his release point. You got to look at where he's going to pitch the ball, how he's going to release it, how he's going to swing it, and you got to be right on top of the ball because as soon as you're not on top of that ball, guaranteed you'll get bowled. It's as simple as that. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, absolutely. Me just... Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, you can see that clearly in this video that you know you you need to be really on your top form. You know, that a one millisecond of false movement in either direction and you yes. know your stumps will be crumbling uh, but yeah please do continue in your second point with the uh, so, other bowler left arm bowlers so i'm just going to explain the uh, you know the, the the technical side of things uh, i'm, I'm going to discuss the you know when it comes to the action you know you when you when you're talking about the action between uh, asif uh, and uh, imran khan imran khan is a lot more upright uh, but asif like you said he's slingy now, going back to Danish, now there's no difference between him and Danish because they're both very slingy when they release mm. the ball. Yeah. And because when you're slingy, guaranteed the ball will come into you, right? Mm -hmm. And what makes Azahat more special uh, out of the two is that he's a lot more upright. Mm -hmm. And to say he's upright and he, you know, he's got the ability to move the ball in, it, you know, it takes a special bowler to bowl that. And uh, another good thing about Azahat is he's got few... You know, he's got a few tricks up his sleeve. And he's got beautiful off-cutters as well. I mean, you know, if you've seen him bowl yesterday, he's got an amazing off-cutter. And mm -hmm. the way he bowled, the way he bowled at Jawad as well, it was a late in swing, but it was a very sharp swing. But, I mean, you know, Danish, I think uh, what, what, what supports Danish and Asif, I think what, what works in their favour is that they're very slingy. And uh, I think once, you know, the, the more slingy you are, I think there's, a more, there's more chance that you can create that pace and also bring have the ability automatically to bring the ball in. Whilst Azahat is a lot more upright, but yeah, he brings the ball in. Yeah, abso I mean, abso so absolutely. Yeah, I agree with you there. And we do have, obviously, Danish here bowling as well. I'm, I haven't had the 
uh, opportunity to face him yet. But yeah, that, that, that will be quite a, quite a good uh, challenge. And uh, I mean, I do have a question for you, Nasser Hussain, which I don't think you may like as much. But I mean, just watching this video, I mean, I, it, I do wonder what exactly was going through your mind for taking this particular run. Because uh, maybe, I mean, was there perhaps an urgency to get a run where you were behind on run rate? Or was it just a mishap, a brain fog? Now, if you look at uh, I play, you know, where I play the ball, I played it into the gap. I played it with soft hands. Uh -huh. So, you know, if I had someone backing me, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to, you know, I'm, I'm speaking on my, you know, my defence. Mm -hmm. Normally, it would work. And I, when I ran with, obviously, you know yourself, when I ran with uh, Maza in the past, yeah. I was always hitting on that same spot. Mm -hmm. We always go for a run and we had a good understanding because he'd be, he's there backing up. Yeah. With Rocker, he's, 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 because he... he he, he didn't back up. Maybe it's my fault as well because I misjudged a run. Yeah. And I misjudged my partner as well that, look, he's not mm -hmm. Mazar. He's not he's not someone I can, you know, run with effectively. Is <laughs> as keen I to think, run, I understand. I think so. Yeah, what, so what I'm picking up here is, firstly, when you, when you played this shot, I think perhaps in your mind, this was going a bit further to the right. So closer to that red line over there where, the, where my mouse yeah. is hovering over. That's point number one. Secondly, you were probably expecting Wakar to already be out of his crease and at this point yeah. to be somewhere in the middle of the pitch. Now, yeah. he's already hesitating. The ball is there. The fielder hasn't even got the ball, but he's hesitating already uh, from that run as well. And obviously, as you can see, he's just stood there. <laughs> Perhaps Mazar, on the other now, hand, would have already be closer to yeah, the red line. Yeah, so exactly. I, I can understand now, yeah, what's going now, on. There. If you, now, if you look at Walker, look where he stood as well. As soon as he chased after the ball, as soon as I played that, when, as soon as Danish uh, you know, started running towards the ball, Waka was already halfway. Now, mm -hmm. if he carried on running, he would have made it. Guaranteed. Yeah, I think they yeah, would have had a better a, chance than yeah, what ended up happening, certainly. And he would have took Danish uh, a couple of more seconds. You know, he, he would have took him a couple of seconds more to mm -hmm. even pick up that ball. As soon as he picked up that ball, Waka would have been in anyway. So yeah. that's what I was thinking. But, you know, he worked with, uh, the, you know, with the likes of Maza, where, you know, we have that good understanding. Maybe mm -hmm. with other batsmen, I don't have that much of an understanding, which... Again, it's, it is my fault, but at the same time, it's not as well because, you know, a batsman under non-strikers, you know, should be, uh, you know, you know, should be aware and should be backing up 100%. Now, if I was the non-strikers, I know it might, it's my call as well, remember. So, mm -hmm. you know, anywhere, let's say, you know, there's a point. So, anywhere past point, you know, in your left side, that's the yeah. strike, you know, a batsman on strike, that's his call. But mm -hmm. anything behind the keeper, that's the non-striker's call. Mm -hmm. That's the basic rule of indoor, and that's what makes you a better runner by, uh, you know, having that awareness. Yes, I mean certainly. I mean, running is crucial, and always, you know, there will be, without a shadow of a doubt, arguments between players of, you know, what what they think is right. But it, it is uh, a decision you have to take uh, very, very yeah. quickly whether you're going to set off or not. But yeah, moving moving the what cost on, we do have very limited time, so I thought the next key point on the agenda. I don't know if this was actually written in the agenda or not, but I found this to be quite interesting, is the tactic used by Burngreave Tigers against uh, City Strikers of bowling spin when they have premier pace bowlers. And this, I think, took everyone by surprise. Uh, yeah, what did you guys think about this particular decision that they took? Definitely. I think um, it was a shock. It wasn't something uh, that anyone would have expected. And I think all credit given to Hamza and Bash for you know, carrying this plan out because it's obviously worked very effectively for them. I think what they've realised is looking at the surface, looking at how the ball uh, plays out on this particular area, they've figured out that probably the best way to go against a team who likes pace on the ball. You know, these guys, you know, they love to hit the ball on the up with a bit of, uh, with a bit of pace, with some flair in their shots. The moment you take that away from them and they're having to create that power by themselves, that's when they started struggling. So it was a very good uh, move by Hamza and Bash um, to induce spin into the game for five overs and it definitely worked out very well for them. Um, but yeah, very well thinking by the guys. Yeah, but and you know, another important thing I picked up is that these guys can bowl spin. I mean, you know, if you look at uh, Awes, for example, I was really surprised. He was absolutely, he was gripping the ball. I mean, let's just have a look at a few of his deliveries. Uh, and, you know, he's always uh, getting a lot of compliments on his pace, but I don't think he gets as much on his spin bowling. Look at that, that comes in. 
and you know that's magic of his fingers there that takes a certain amount of skill and uh, this goes on to show the kind of diversity of skill in the bowling department uh, particularly that uh, burn grieve tigers have and uh, yeah fantastic uh, brains as well they've clearly done their homework they've assessed the strengths and weaknesses of these uh, these i mean look at that i mean there's not much you can do with that really because that's no, coming a good amount of pace as well it's not there <clears> just <throat> as a loopy slow delivery so yeah fantastic it's, decision it's, it's it's in good areas as well what you have to remember especially when you know it's, it's similar to bowling pace as well you got a pitcher in the right area. If you get too full, there's every chance that they can get underneath the ball and they can loft it over over your head for a six, or vice versa. If you pitch it too short, um, they could rock back onto the but onto the back foot and loft it again over for a six or place it into the gap. So what they did really well here is say just where the batsmen are having to come forward and they're having to you know play against the spin or with the spin because it's turning into them. So, yeah, credit really has to be given to them, guys. They really did well um, in that department. Yes, yeah, fantastic. Um, so coming on to the other next next point I wanted to talk about, and uh, I just, sorry, let me just come back into the meeting just to keep keep track of the time as well. Because I do believe if you go over the time limit, it, it like automatically cuts the call. Are you guys able to see on your screen the length of the uh, the length of the video so far? No, we are uh, no. access to that. Okay. I, I can't see it. No worries. I mean, I'll go on to the next one. I guess if it cuts off, it cuts off. It'll be saved anyways automatically on the folder. But um, an important thing I wanted to talk about is basically the teams at the bottom of the table right now, number seven and eight. And, you know, I, I, I personally feel that at times, uh, you know, that there, there have been slightly harsh commentary words said to them as well. But at the end of the day, they are very, very young team. Uh, both of them young teams, rather. And they, they, they have players who are unexperienced in the indoor arena. But what I am seeing, without a shadow of doubt, is tremendous amount of talent at that age group. And I feel if they stick as a team for the next few years to come, they can really pose a lot of challenges to these higher-up teams. I mean, when I was there at 17, 18, a lot of them, as they are, the youngsters... Um, I, I mean, I could not play the way I, I play right now. I, I would struggle. I mean, I my team would be getting pulled out for 10, 20 runs, you know, consistently. But they have shown fights and they definitely do have some talents within their teams. So any words of advice from uh, yourself, Nasser, or scientists for, for these guys that, that may be feeling slightly down with their performances so far? Yeah, I think, um, like you said, they are a young team. They've got a lot of potential to become, um, you know, a better team in the future. My advice would be to keep going. Don't give up. I, it's your first tournament. Keep at it. Keep minutes. developing your skills and come back year, you know, year after year and improve your game. Learn from your mistakes. Don't come back repeating the same mistakes that you made the season before. Learn from them develop your skills and come back as a stronger team. If you look at a classic example is Donald Dynamite. When they first started, they were in a similar situation to what a team like Mana is at the moment. They learned from their mistakes. They've developed their game and now they are one of the top teams in, in the league so far. So um, don't get disheartened. You know, keep playing do well and you know you know year after year you'll improve slowly improve your game and you'll get to the top uh, you know as they say everything requires hard work nothing comes easy and like you said Adnan, they do have a lot of potential there's some fantastic batsmen and some fantastic bowlers in their teams and you know it will be very um, heartwarming to see those youngsters climb that ladder and get to the top um, through the hard work that they put in yeah, thank, thank you for that, scientist. Definitely. I mean, and, and the point that you made about Donald Dynamite uh, in the early years of, of this tournament, you can see that, you know, they did not have a good record. So, you know, this was 2018. They played 10 matches. They won three and lost seven. And, you know, we, we had a similar kind of thing going on in 2019. You know, six matches, they only won one and lost five. But you can see that they have really transformed and they are a, a, a team to be reckoned with, you know. They, they are a really powerful team right now. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of space for improvement and uh, they, they should stay positive. I mean, look at 
So this innings against, you know, Firth Park Warriors, you have to understand Firth Park Warriors, all of the players have been playing indoor for years. But this fantastic innings by Zane himself, you know, single-handedly getting nearly half the runs uh, for his team. So that, that's the kind of grit that you need to really show uh, when, when you're on the pitch. So, yeah, I mean, that, that would be the key, you know, words of advice uh, for these youngsters. Um, but, yeah, I think... Sorry, I'm just going on to the... Yeah, I think we've covered the main things in our agenda. And obviously, we don't want to drag this on for too long as well for the viewers. Um, but I think this will be a good thing going on in a, on a weekly basis where we, we can, you know, we'll hopefully have a few more people joining the discussion as well, a few more of the commentators. And um, yeah, so I, I think maybe this can be something that's positive and uh, that can really help the players to reflect back on their performances as well and look for improvements. So yeah, I would like to thank uh, Azahat and uh, Nasa Hussain for joining me here. It's been lovely having you guys. And uh, let's hope the recording went ahead properly, but you guys will know shortly anyways. So yeah, thank, thank you very you. much. Take care, guys. No problem. Yeah, you yeah, too, Mark. Take care. Uh,